they were literally attacking each other like two seconds ago and now he's licking his face adorable hi everyone my name is jamie welcome back to my channel and today we're doing a dollar tree book review and we are looking at the sea beast takes a lover by michael andreason i was a little worried you guys would start to think that there were only bad books at dollar tree because my last what three dollar tree books were um negative reviews uh, but this is an example of a diamond in the rough like i said the reason these books are at dollar tree is because they didn't sell at other stores or they were overstock which means that the, the, the outcome is more likely to be not good not great but again this is a great book <laughs> so i actually bought this book like over a year ago when i worked at dollar tree it was really interesting and we had like eight of the eight copies of these which is why i think this is more overstock um but like nobody picked it up and I'm glad I did, and I'm glad I finally read it because it was wonderful. It was a nice little treat, you know? So this is a collection of short stories, which is actually kind of hard for me to finish. Um, I've tried several times to read uh, different collections of short stories, and it, if there's not a short story that I like, or if it's boring, or I don't get into it, I put the book down, and since it's not an overarching storyline, there aren't, like, characters i want to see their stories get resolved or whatever i usually just don't pick it back up um so i challenged myself to finish this book and i'm really glad i did i loved the writing style of this book it was so simplistically melancholy and surreal and I love it. I love surrealist art and writing. I think it's so interesting and you can do so much with it. And I, I loved how this book didn't have like a bunch of flower, flowery language or purple prose or anything like that. It didn't feel the need to use a lot of metaphors or wrap the words around itself. It just was simple and yet it had tone and environment and all of the stories felt cohesive even though they were wildly different and it was so just amazing. I loved it. Now I love flowery purple prose language whatever. I I mean the Atlas 6 is one of my fav current favorite series i'm i'm currently reading the second book loving it um the secret history also uh, and i love those kind of writing styles but i also think there's something to be said about the simplicity of this book and how um in 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 short little stories i mean all the stories were only about 20 pages you were able to get a sense of something bigger in each story um, I just absolutely loved it and it, it felt like reading, you know, those like American classics that are just so profound with such simple, right? I keep saying simple. That's, that's probably not the best idea, uh, not the best compliment, but all of those American classics that are just so profound, but you know, not full of themselves. I don't know. It just, uh, I liked it. I really liked it. So my top three favorite uh, stories of this. I believe there are, are 11 short stories. My top three favorite would be the first one, Our Fathers at Sea, which is this weird funerary practice. It's about uh, a man, a father, who uh, is having to lay his own father to rest, and he has two little boys, and he's taking them to this funeral and the way the in like the first couple paragraphs he describes it as crating the father up and putting him or taking him out to an unknown location in the sea and i thought this was just burial at sea maybe he was uh, a navy officer maybe something like because i didn't realize this was the first story so i didn't realize we were in this weird surrealist world so i thought that's what they meant it's just it was an at sea burial right turns out the custom for this short story's world is that at a certain age or whenever the time is ready or whatever um you you put your loved ones your older relatives in a crate like an iron crate 
it's hermetically sealed and you take them out to sea and they basically suffocate out in the ocean and that's that's weird that's so weird and like the family when they go it's like a carnival there there are uh clowns and there's cotton candy and popcorn and they have balloons and when the crate goes up everyone releases their balloons and it's so sad because this man is you know saying goodbye to his father but it's not you know his father's kind of in a vegetative state and so he he doesn't really get to say goodbye and he knows that his young children are going to have to do this exact same thing to him when he gets to be that old and it was so sad because it made me realize that my parents are gonna die at some point and I'm gonna die and I don't want to think about that I don't I don't want to think about that anyway or I cried reading that story it was it was it was heavy it was a heavy first introduction to this book but it made me keep reading I think my all-time favorite would have to be the saints in the parlor which um I tried explaining why I like this to my roommate and I just couldn't like I couldn't figure out the words to explain this but so I'll try the story is that there are a bunch of saints stuck in this little house um, and they don't really know where they are and they're trying to get out but they separate at a certain point and each of them go to a room that challenges them it challenges the reason why they are uh, why they are devoted to God <laughs> challenges their devotion to the the religion whatever i'm not catholic i don't understand the the terminology for this but um all of the saints are named based off of their iconography so it's not like saint catherine or saint anthony it's um saint tongue of flames saint her own hand on a plate saint dubious possibly mythical origins and then saint head no upside down skull saint upside down skull and i again i'm not catholic i don't know the iconography of all the saints i don't know if these are real saints or fake saints or something like that but i love those kind of naming conventions that's a trope that i think should be used more often i think warrior cats also did that where like there was a clan of cats where the first thing they saw after giving birth was the cat the the their baby's name i don't know that's weird even though I'm not religious, I am a huge slut for any kind of uh, Catholic imagery or um, themes and motifs in stories. They're always so cool and so well done, usually because they're uh, done by a person who is Catholic or raised Catholic and understands that and understands the nuances of Catholicism. And it's always just so interesting. Okay, and then there was Jenny. Oh my gosh, Jenny was weird. Jenny is about a family that takes care of the youngest sibling who is disabled and her disability is that she doesn't have a head. She doesn't have a head. That's not a very normal disability. <laughs> um, she doesn't have a head so she like can't see, hear, taste, even eat for herself. The way she eats is her brother chews up the food and and puts it in her feeding tube and um she, they she communicates through taps but then you're like if she doesn't have a head does she have a brain does she have a conscious she does because she can talk to people and she has thoughts and feelings and emotions but then you're like that's what a brain is and you need a head to have a brain don't you and it was just so weird and it's not explained because it doesn't have to be explained because it's surrealist and it's a story and it doesn't really matter but it was just it made me think and it was it was weird i don't want to say anything else about that story because it was just kind of a slice of life but the girl doesn't have a head and i was like oh it made me feel weird but also good i liked it i could see all of these short stories as being like these interesting and somber animated short films i watched a lot of them on youtube and a lot of them had the same surrealist or somber um tone and like i wouldn't understand what was going on but i still loved it now they can't all be winners so my least favorite stories out of the i think 11 um would one of them is actually the titular story, The Sea Beast Takes a Lover. 
And I think it's just because I expected it to be something else. And because, I mean, that's what made me pick up the book is this title, the cover and stuff. So um, I wanted it to be something else. And when it wasn't, I was just kind of disappointed. You know, I was the most excited for it. Um, not that it was bad, just I didn't really enjoy it. It's also like the best of my least liked. So it's not even that bad. It's just the one I had thoughts on. The story is that there's a ship and a kraken has gone into heat and has taken the ship as her lover and so she's wrapped around it and, and stuff like that and um, there's this idea of impending doom because they are slowly sinking due to this kraken. I mean she's dragging them under but also if she ever releases them there's so much damage to the ship that they would sink. But there was just too much going on and I didn't really get everything and I was like why is this part here and why is this part here and I didn't I didn't get it but again it's also the best of the my least favorites right the other two um were the king's teacup rest and rite of baptism and these two were just not for me they they didn't grab me I didn't like the uh structure of the rite of baptism and I didn't like, and I just, I didn't, I didn't read them. That's all I have to really say is they, they were just something about them. I just like, I'm not going to be interested in this. So I kind of skimmed through it and then just skipped to a better story. Um, and I mean, again, they can't all be winners. Um, two out of the 11 were just not my favorite. Whatever. I, I decided instead of spending time on them, I'd just skip them and yeah. That's all I have to say about that. I can't really say anything because I didn't read them. So like I said, I rated this book four stars. And um, the back cover says that Michael Andreasen has a master's in creative writing from the University of California. So I was like, wow, this guy must be a prolific writer. He must have a ton of stories, ton of books. Um, I want to see all of these right and um, this book came out in 2018 so I was like well he's written this book and it says it's his first one he's probably got another book right so I went to his website to see if I could order a book of his this is his only book what that is the most upsetting thing about this that this is his only book i was so prepared i love the writing style i thought his ideas were so unique and refreshing and weird and i love weird books i love surrealist art so i was like i need to read this guy's novel i need to find out all of his novels and and read all of them he's probably my new favorite author right and then i go to his website no other books no other books. He's got a few short stories that he's uh, published in various author, magazine, whatever, journals, whatever, I don't know. Um, but no other, no books, no novels. This is his first and only so far novel. And I'm just saying, I don't know who this is going to reach out in the world, um, but hopefully I can get a message out to Mr. Andreasen, if that is how you pronounce your name. I just, I don't know. Um, Please write a novel, and if you have a novel written, please publish it, please. I want to read it. I don't know if anybody else does, but I do. So if you if you don't even want to go through the hassle of publishing it, just send me the manuscript. I'll just read it. I'll read it and I'll treasure it. I love it. I love it already, okay? Mr. Andreasen, please, <laughs> can you just write a novel? I would love, I would love to see what your brain could come up with for like a full in-depth, intense novel. Like, come on. If Michael Andreessen ever does write a, a novel, please let me know and um, I will read it. I will. I'm, I'm, I'm honest about that. All right, that's it for my review of this book. It was a bit shorter because it's a smaller book and only short stories, so there wasn't a lot to talk about for each one. Um, but like I said before, there are not only bad books at Dollar Tree, and hopefully I will be reading a lot more good books. I did get a bunch of new books from Dollar Tree. They're sitting at my feet right now. All right, that's going to be it for me. If you like that, please like and subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. Um, and I don't know, go read a book today.
I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye! So I picked up the Atlas Paradox, which is the sequel to the Atlas Six, and already one of my predictions has come true. So can't wait for that review. Very excited.